All right, we're back with more of today's robot revolution, turning now to the world of medicine. Well, this. Ooh. Here we go. Wait, what Ready we're. This Look is this. an example of the Locust Bot. It's a warehouse robot that delivers everything from medical supplies, first aid kits, brings them in. Very cool. Right. We, we could soon be hearing. The robot will see you now instead of the doctor, perhaps. <laughs> NBC's Gaddy Schwartz takes a look at just how much AI we'll be seeing in the ER and beyond. How's it look? Deep breath. Yes. This is not a test. These are real working nurse robots in Bangkok, Thailand, handling medical records and pills and even singing songs to soothe patients. <laughs> We are very happy because we invest just a little bit and we get very good feedback from our staff and patients. Dr. Anu Nana, director of the Meng Hu Tua Tana Hospital, says they commissioned these robots to help staff, not to replace them. Now a nurse has more time with the patients and work with other important things. But there is a whole lot more to emergency room robots than cyborg caregivers. Star Trek fans might recognize the Tricorder, that handheld device that can diagnose any medical problem with one quick scan. Severe heart damage, signs of congestion in both lungs. And that science is no longer fiction. Dr. Basil Harris, an emergency room physician at Lankinau Medical Center in Winewood, Pennsylvania, has invented a real-life version of that Trekkie technology capable of diagnosing 16 different diseases. You could have it in the front door of a, of a hospital where you could help triage patients, uh, help decide you know, what's going on with, with certain individuals as they're walking in. While FDA approvals could be several years away, Dr. Harris's team is working on building trust the trust with providers that are going to be getting this information and acting on it, the trust of the public that's going to be using this, this type of device, and that's going to take, take time. And if robots can help nurses and doctors at work, could they help patients at home? Hello there, Ray. Is this a good time for our daily check-in? Got it? Yep. I'm going to introduce you to my little friend, Mabel. Meet Mabel, a personalized healthcare companion in the form of a friendly little yellow robot. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Superb. So glad you're feeling great. Host patient, Ray Bird, a retired San Francisco City bus driver who recently suffered a heart attack. To make sure he stayed on his treatment regimen, his doctor sent him home with Mabel. Did you take your medications yesterday as prescribed? Yes. Mabu reminds Ray when to take his medicine and tracks his overall progress. And if any problems arise, his healthcare team is notified. Without Mabu in your home, where do you think you'd be? I'd be a little more careless. Has it been difficult to get some of your patients to, to trust a robot? In general, no. <laughs> you know, we've designed the robot to look cute. Corey Kidd is CEO of Catalia Health, Mabu's inventors. What are your patients like about Mabu? One is the fact that it's always there and available. You know, patients in most scenarios where they have Mabu, there is a nurse or a doctor that they can call. They often don't. They often feel like they don't want to bother anybody. If you had to describe your relationship with Mabu, how would you do that? It's my partner. Not that kind of partner. <laughs> a partner. She's part of the family? Yeah. I like her being here. Robots making patients feel a little more human. Have a pleasant day. Gotti Schwartz, NBC News, San Francisco. Got it. Wow. That's amazing, yeah. isn't it? It really what is. What they can do. Yeah.